All right, now that we're done with loops and lists and variables, we can actually start doing something a little bit cooler. So in this video, we're going to get user input. And then based on what the user gives us, we're going to loop through that and print out some stuff. So to get user input in Python, we have to create a variable. So let's call this user input one. And you set it equal to this thing called input. And you'll notice it turns purple because that's a keyword. And now in the parentheses, you just give it what what prompt do you want to be put on the screen. So we can say input, um, please type your name. All right, so let's just run that and see what it does. Now notice that the program's not ending. It's, it's waiting for the user to type something in. So we can type in something, hit enter, and now user input the variable is equal to what the user typed in. So after this, <clears throat> let's say print hello um, user input. So let's say Bob. It's going to say hello Bob. Let's put a space after that. Oh. Tim. Hello Tim. Um, so that's cool. It's pretty simple, straightforward. So now we're gonna we're gonna make another user input. We're gonna get two pieces of information from this guy. So make this user input two, and we're gonna say, please type how many times you want your name printed. All right. So Ted, and let's print it a hundred times. Okay. So now we have two pieces of data stored in these variables. Now we can use these variables. So we're just going to use a for loop like we learned about earlier and we're going to loop through however many times this guy typed in. So we're going to use that in range for loop. So for x in range and now we're just going to give it user input 2. So last time you said 100 so this 100 would be right here. So that would be the same as writing uh, 100. But now we're actually involving the users. Um, so what do we want to do? We just want to print his this guy's name. So print, uh, if you guessed it, yeah, user input one. Print user input one. Now this is going to give us an error. It's already yelling at us a little bit here. It says expected type int got string. So let's run it, see what happens. We get this big error. So string object cannot be interpreted as integer. Um, so what's happening is when you use input like this, it's setting everything equal to a string. So even though we typed in a number here, we typed in 50, it interpreted it as 50 like this, as if we just set it as a string in a sentence. Um, and this range, to use this tool here, we need a, a real number. So that's pretty simple to fix. In Python it is. That is, it's not as easy in it's not as easy in other languages, but uh, in Python, we can just prefix it with the keyword int and then just surround it by parentheses like this. And now it's basically going to convert whatever's in here to an int. So it's going to convert this string to an int. Uh, it's called casting. You might hear that term thrown around. So now this, sh this should work as we expect it. So Bob, and let's print it 50 times, or let's print it 5 50,000 times. And there we go. That was pretty quick. Um, so that's how you can get user input. So you can start to see how this, this comes in handy a lot very, very quickly. Um, we could ask the user for a file directory structure. So we could say, hey, tell us what file, what folder you want to look at. So we could copy this. So let's say, uh, please type your folder. So we could, um, now we have that folder there. Let's just print it. So now you start to see if we can get the user to give us a folder, we can do other things to this folder. So, so we now we can, we're starting to begin to see how we can do useful things in Python. <laughs> Up to this point, it's not really useful, but once we start involving other objects and folders and files, it becomes cool. Um, what time is it? 4.50. All right, one other thing I thought I'd mentioned in this video is the length method. So let's make a list here. Uh, 
friend list equal to 50, 40, 50, 30, 60. And now if we just wanted to get the length of this list, meaning how many items are in it, we can just say print the length of friend list and that's going to give us that number. It's going to be four. So if we add another one in here, it's going to be five. It's going to be seven or six. So this comes in handy. Say you had two lists and items were being added to each list and you wanted to compare which list was bigger, which that, that's a very reasonable thing you might have to do in programming. Um, you can use this method and, and we're going to use this a lot. Um, so I'm trying to just teach you guys all the all the things necessary to do some useful things. Uh, just the bare bones. And this is one of them. I'm trying to think right now if there's anything else. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we'll come up with, I'll come up with something probably and make another video. But uh, we're getting to the point where now we can actually make a script that does something. So um, I'll talk to you later.